Du quoi Ok. The, the background sound is a, nice, a little noisy because uh, we need to to, um, to hear it. Uh, anyway. The background sound is a little noisy because uh, we need to to uh, it's an echo. Okay, should be fine now. The, the background sound is a, nice, a little noisy because uh, we need to to. Um, you to hear it. Uh, anyway. It's an echo. Sorry about the technical problems we have. Should be fine, no? You're a genius. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let me see if uh, Yongle is here. Yongle, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, um, so let me start the class and I'll ask you to do a short announcement about the next class we're going to offer to the general public and also our current class, okay. Um, I'm sorry, Henry, I'll announce that at the end, towards the end of the class because I'm still working on the announcement. Oh. Okay, we'll do yeah, that. Uh, the link, registration link, I'm still working on it. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, I just make a very brief uh, uh, announcement first. So you will do the detail uh, yes. at the end of class. Good. Thank you. So, yeah. Basically, um, we're going to uh, have a 15 uh, class in the beginning of uh, 2022 with the Brooklyn Library. And detail will be announced later in the end of this class. Uh, the, the title of the lesson would be Fusion, um, Western and Eastern Watercolor. So um, if you're interested in both Chinese brush painting, landscape painting, and the Western landscape, you're welcome to join us. Uh, the detail will be announced uh, with the registration link in the end of the class. Uh, if you could not stay long, uh, will be um, on YouTube and uh, I'll send you an email also. Don't worry about that. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, Master Zhao Wu Qi. It's a French uh, spelling or a kind of dialect, maybe Cantonese, I don't know. Uh, in Mandarin, we'll, we'll, um, we'll say Zhao, Zhao Wu Ji. Will spell Z H A O um, W U and J I, but uh, it's uh, because he he used this uh, in the uh, Western language, and then the, uh, this is the uh, how he spell it and become well known. The actually no no doubt the most famous contemporary Chinese landscape or abstract uh, master in both, uh, or in the universe, in, on the globe, in both uh, Western and Eastern. Uh, I, I, I asked it, uh, my friend uh, Yang, uh, Mr. Yang, you know, uh, Professor Yang, he, he taught us about, kind of, uh, on his opinion, he agreed with me. There's no argument on that. He's the greatest. Uh, he died uh, a few years ago uh, in 2013. And in 2017, uh, in the US, in, in New York, they had this exhibition called uh, No Limit. It's named after his uh, first name, Wu Ji, No Limit. I had a, a detailed translation about uh, uh, his philosophy, the, the, uh, meaning of his name in uh, his, in the email write out i won't repeat that because uh, it, <laughs> it the name itself uh, is very um complicated to, to talk <laughs> i could talk uh, the whole class about wuji you know it's uh, basically the, the state before being or non being <laughs> uh, it's a huntun huntun Hundun means uh, uh, chaos, uh, chaos, 
uh, order from chaos or whatever. You know, when you practice, uh, practice the Tai Chi, you know, class, uh, we'll start with the Wu Ji, or stand still, uh, take a three deep breaths. And then we start to gradually get into action. That's uh, Tai Chi. So Tai Chi is, is the movement or action. Um, Wu Ji is no action. Right? Am I right? Anybody uh, study Tai Chi? You, you know that. Um, okay. Yes. We, yeah. Any questions? Comments? That's right. By doing nothing, everything is done. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's exactly uh, what the, the dog is. Um, Wu Wei is. You know his brother's name? Anybody? He, he lived in New York. Uh, he visited the uh, U.S. in the mid '50s. Stayed with uh, his brother in New York. Um, and do, do you know his name? Wu Wei. No action. <laughs> no dot. <laughs> Wu Wei. So Wu Ji and Wu Wei brothers. Uh huh. Okay. Um, speaking of his trip in the U.S., I have to mention that. Uh, uh, it was a turning point, right? It was a turning point. Um, he got to the France at the age of uh, 28 when he was, uh, uh, yeah, he, he already said, uh, graduated from the Hangzhou uh, National Art Academy under Lin Fengmian um, and the other two. Uh, returning art uh, artist and teacher from France, Wu uh, Dao Wei, right, and uh, also Lin Wenzhen, I think. Uh, so all three of his uh, uh, mentors uh, are from are from France in the school. He also took a class uh, from uh, Pan Tian Shou, the very famous uh, Chinese. Uh, uh, Master, we talked about, and uh, but he didn't like his class. He didn't like traditional brush painting at all. He will escape Pan Tian Shou's uh, uh, class. He jumped out of window, uh, and uh, in the final exam, he would draw a piece of rock. <laughs> and uh, Pan Tian Shou was very mad at him, and uh, reported to, to the principal Min Ling Feng Mian, saying, "This guy, this this boy, has to be." expelled and uh, Lin and the other um, oil painting uh, teacher uh, protected him, tolerated his uh, behavior. Uh, so uh, he got uh, married to this person. Uh, this person, I can zoom in a little bit. This is, uh, I think we have a bigger picture maybe somewhere. The portrait of his, his uh, uh, wife, Lan Lan. Lan Lan, yeah, portrait of my wife. You can see the influence uh, of uh, Matisse, Henri Matisse, right? <coughs> Henry Matisse, yeah. Like uh, this uh, stool, very different than. Um, it's a forest kind of style. And this was done in 1949, uh, as soon as he arrived in Paris, maybe one year, within one year, and he studied the nudes uh, in, in Paris. Uh, he already was a teacher, I think. You know, it reminds me, my age, when I was, uh, arrived in the state, I was uh, at the same age, at 28. Uh, he had a son, um, he left, they left in, in China because she was a singer, a, a musician. Uh, they met in school, in the same school. She studied music. So he, she was pursuing her own career. And in mid uh, 50s, they had a, a crisis in their marriage and they eventually got divorced. So uh, after that, he, he went to uh, New York on a several months trip, at first to New York, 
and uh, he saw impressionistic, uh, not impressionist, uh, abstract expressionism in the States. Um, and then he went to, uh, before, prior to the, the state, you can see in the early 50s, he did uh, many uh, paintings uh, with influence of uh, Paul Klee. Paul Klee, uh, the signs, uh, those uh, primitive, uh, but, uh, he used the Chinese arrogant bone later. Um, and he got, uh, he met a, a, a lady in Hong Kong. Actually, she was a movie star. He saw the movie and liked her. So, she, uh, so she, he just uh, proposed to, to and they, they got married uh, and then uh, returned to France and become uh, his second relationship. So after the first relationship, he, uh, he developed his, uh, uh, Abstract style. See, he he went abstract. Um, I think it's very um, you, you know when he was asked, um, can he teach um, abstract painting in Hangzhou? You know, same school. Um, Barbara attended the Hangzhou Meiyuan uh, Fine Art Academy. He said, uh, I must have have the drive the feeling to do that. I cannot do it just, you know, any time. Abstract painting is something, an expression of, uh, for him, a mood, a emotion, uh, you know, uh, some kind of uh, depression or could be, you know, anger or whatever, a complex. Um, uh, so he cannot paint abstract at any time. So when he got to uh, divorced, uh, he started to do abstract, okay. Um, and uh, he turned to, he still see influence of uh, Paul Klee. He, uh, it's called Arca Bone uh, period. Arca Bone is the script, ancient script of Shang Dynasty on bronze. And uh, see this painting is a turning point uh, in his uh, Career, it's called the wind or vent. Uh, the background is so uh, energetic, you know, with the filled with the, the, the wind or the air. So he's, he started to paint invisible, uh, invisible substance like uh, air, qi here. This is the first of uh, such painting to depict uh, the 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 chi I think okay um, that I just turned uh, this is a very good book actually it has a very um, very well written um, introduction I forgot the name of the author but uh, Dominic Villeping or something. I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce. Then this article is well written. And, and if you like to have this book, I just, uh, it's a chronological order. So it's, I like that. Uh, so you can see the development of uh, his style. So this, uh, uh, this is the, uh, still the Oracle phones period, I think, but getting more and more um, expressive. And since he depicts fire, something like that. And he starts to do, I think there's a moonscape somewhere. So this is more um, what we call the second period is uh, uh, he developed his own so Zhao uh, Wukia, his own word, um, space. Um, and uh, with this uh, uh, wild grass style calligraphy, not calligraphy, uh, marks, we call it Kuang uh, Cao Shiqi, or period of uh, wild grass script.
Tang Cao Shi Qi. Yeah, you can see some ink painting. Uh, that's what we're going to do. And last night I tried to uh, paint his oil in, in, in Sui uh, in uh, ink. Actually, he starts to do that uh, in the late uh, 70s after his uh, second wife committed uh, suicide. Uh, because she she become a uh, uh, housewife um, and uh, she studied uh, architecture. I'm not architecture, sculpture, sculpture. She becomes like uh, a very successful sculptor actually. But he uh, was depressed and uh, uh, it uh, sleeping pills to kill herself. So uh, Uji was uh, very sad and uh, he couldn't paint oil at, uh, for, for, a moment, for, for a while. He started to do uh, ink painting after during that uh, morning period and become the third period called the Sumi uh, Shui Mo, uh, ink and wash period. And uh, finally he will paint the universal uh, no limit seems uh, in, in his later years. So it's about four uh, period, what we, we see in this. Uh, actually, this is the early 70s. So his second wife was uh, uh, gone, I mean, died in 73. Yeah. OK, this one was uh, uh, called the memory of May. That is, uh, May is uh, the name of uh, the uh, actress, the Hong Kong actress, his uh, second wife. This is a uh, uh, attributed to to her. And you can see the. I think this is more like the grass, the wild grass. You can see this one. It's a Tsumi painting. And then the Tsumi uh, ink painting here. Oh, this one is interesting. The, the round format we learned from the last time. The, uh, you can see the Tai Chi symbol in this. The movement of a circle, the opposite energies, or qi, yin and yang. Right? Uh, he did uh, quite a few, maybe four of them. And also he, he, he used oval shaped uh, round canvas sometimes. This is to ink painting. Oh, he um, started to, uh, in 1972, uh, the same year, I, I think I was around, it should be 1972, not 73, his second wife died. And he went to back to China after 23 years to see his family, <laughs> his, his mother. Um, he was born in a very rich banker's family. His father was a banker in, ha in Shanghai. He was born in Beijing. Uh, they moved in Shanghai after, um, shortly after his uh, uh, birth. And uh, his father was very, actually very supportive uh, to his uh, uh, interest in, in art and gave him uh, 30,000 US dollars uh, before uh, in 1948, uh, for he, to sponsor him to go to France to study for two years, supposedly, but he never planned to come back. He, 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 um, so he, he had no worry about, uh, like other uh, students uh, from the same school, Wu Guanzhong, you know, or other uh, normal family in background student, they, they had, including Ming Feng Mian, right? The, they had to work or fi find a, a financial uh, to support themselves. 
but he never had a problem with uh, money because of his uh, family background. But they uh, they didn't meet for like 23 years after the, uh, uh, I think his father probably already passed when he returned to China. And then he started to do ink painting in the same year. Uh, he, he, like I said, he refused to study traditional uh, brush painting. However, he was trained by his grandfather when he was seven, uh, six and seven years old to write Chinese uh, calligraphy. He said in English uh, that was very helpful in his uh, uh, later artistic career. And this painting was the largest painting. It was uh, commissioned by his good friend, uh, I'm, I am Bei a famous uh, uh, architect for the Hong Kong, uh, not Hong Kong, Singapore uh, uh, hotel lobby. It's uh, 10 meters long and uh, two and a half meters tall. It's huge. By the way, he, he did this uh, large paintings. He, he painted all large. Uh, most of these are above uh, two or three meters. So he um, had to divide them into panels. This middle panel is six meters long. Uh, after painting, it's very heavy. He said uh, he almost fell, uh, hurt his uh, uh, back when he carried that. You know, some, uh, I saw some uh, documentary made uh, in Hong Kong or Taiwan. Taiwan, I think, they just imagine that he, he did it with uh, some uh, machine uh, cart that has the automatic, uh, um, you know, the, the levator, some that kind of thing. I think I didn't see that in his, uh, I will show you a documentary of his studio uh, later uh, after I, I um, finish this book. Uh, because he, he, his uh, studio is very rural, you know, there's no, high-tech things uh, in his studio, I, I see there. Uh, so he, that's why he always paint in panels because he, not, he doesn't have any assistant when he paint, never. He, he handles everything himself. And he works from uh, six to nine every day, including Saturday and, uh, and uh, Sunday. This is a painting very unique. It's called uh, uh, to, uh, Homage to Henry Matisse. It's based on a famous, uh, uh, Matisse like to paint his uh, uh, glass door view outside. It's a beautiful seascape normally. But on the, in the year of uh, 1914, uh, the beginning of the First World War, he did this uh, uh, a painting like this, I think. Uh, uh, I have another book that has the, the Matisse uh, painting in that. But anyway, if you check it on that, it's a uh, uh, seascape. But in that year, he, he blackened it. It's like that. But uh, you can see the, the door. It's still here. But he, he did that uh, more uh, ontologically. He think this is the, uh, in Chinese terms, is the uh, opening to the uh, unlimited, uh, the, the inf infinity, or uh, the, the gate to true art, the, the space behind the, the it's a, both empty and a full in this uh, abstraction painting. And he did something like that in, in vertical panels, uh, kind of yin and yang, negative, positive thing, I think. Um, it has the, this access to the infinity, it starts to paint the sense of universe. The beginning of water, clouds, and this kind of. Um, so we'll, we'll talk more about it, uh, how to do this kind of the techniques because it's a painting class. If you're interested, you can, you, there's, because uh, he's uh, well documented, you know, and this is another version of the same. Uh, so he really liked this theme homage to Henry Martin's second time. So you can see the door here opening to the 
ano Yeah, this is another kind of uh, uh, Tai Chi painting, but it's an oval shape, not a uh, round, perfectly round. Uh, his uh, watercolor, I think. On oh, this painting is interesting, I want to mention. Uh, he returned to figurative uh, from abstraction in the uh, 2000, uh, in his late times. Uh, this is called the uh, history of uh, mountains. For me, I think uh, it looks like the the wrinkle technique strokes he's practicing, and then you know, um, the realistic mountain. Anyway, that's uh, my interpretation. This this is orchid is uh, very different, also it's figurative uh, orchid. The orchid in his backyard. And this is like a plant. He he starts to paint outdoors. Um, for a long time, he locked himself down in the studio painting. So all the paintings you see in his uh, um, <clears throat> abstract landscape is from his mind. He doesn't like his uh, um, uh, early classmate like Wu Guanzhong. Uh, he returned to China. He, he they they got they went to France and in the same year. But he, Wu uh, Guanzhong, uh, returned to China after the communist um, revolution. Um, but he never got his uh, studio for a long time. He so he had to paint outside as a plein air painter. But uh, Zhao Wuji always uh, Zhao Wu K. <laughs> always had his large studio and uh, he doesn't need to go out to paint. So, uh, but the, in his later years, he enjoyed painting in his garden or friend's house, you know, in, uh, just, uh, uh, and uh, he paints his uh, aquarium with, you know, goldfish. Uh, this one for me looks like a Fubashi, homage to Cezanne. Oh, that's what did this one. This is for me to say. So this one is entitled. Most of his painting has no title. It's uh, from 1954, uh, he started to number his uh, uh, painting, uh, date his painting, the finishing date. It became the title or the, just a, a, a code on the back of the canvas. So he, he don't have a title usually. This is a Cezanne. And this is a painting he rendered from an ancient architect, uh, archae archaeological magazine. Uh, it's a Han Dynasty stone temple. He rendered it into this abstract. Okay, this was a commission for the Chinese National Music Hall. It's an uh, abstraction. Excuse me, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Did he switch to rice paper? Oh, it's a. It's a when it's he went back to China? Yeah, yeah yes. Uh, the, all the these ink paintings are on um, rice paper. Rice paper, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, he, he, he actually, the first commission was from Chinese government to do a hotel in Xiangshan, in the, on the suburb um, of uh, Beijing. It's the first modern hotel after uh, the opening uh, of China in the uh, after the, uh, the Cultural Revolution. Um, the, the design of the uh, hotel is uh, his good friend, uh, Yiming Bei. And he did something like this and uh, uh, in huge scale because the, the hotel is black and white kind of scene. So he, he, he won't paint oil. I think since then, uh, most of the commissions in, in China, the hotels or music halls like this are black and white, I, I believe, um, on, on rice paper. Um, but the, the manager of the general manager of the hotel didn't understand that. 
And importantly, uh, he, 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 his response after he returned from a vacation, he saw the painting and said, oh, this is like uh, my child did, or, you know, I can do this, something like that. And Bei Yiming was uh, really uh, angry about that remark uh, and uh, uh, suggested him to withdraw that painting. But uh, he said, that's okay, you know, you know um, it just takes time for them to understand. So now it become a homage site for all the Chinese uh, um, art students, including uh, Mr. Yang Yanwei. He said he paid a visit when he was in Beijing to see the painting and heard that story. He, he said, I asked about his uh, reaction. He, he liked that painting. He said, uh, uh, no, I, 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 uh, it's not this painting, but um, I think it's, I can find somewhere. Uh, it's a little more like a marble, you know, to match the marble ground. And I asked him, Mr. Yang uh, about his technique. I said, uh, did he wrinkle the paper? He, Mr. Yang told me he, he didn't. But he noticed some uh, uh, blotting, like a flipping blot, you know, like that. Or, uh, yeah, blotting or kind of uh, uh, some other technique. I, I noticed uh, from like the brush he's holding here on, on the corner here. He used a, a goat hair brush. Uh, when he paint, he do not wet the brush first as we always do. So he loaded the water and the ink uh, on the dry brush. So the bottom, the heel of the brush is still dry. That keeps the brush split to make this kind of mark, understand? You understand this kind of brush? If you just uh, dipping, kind of, you paint like this, you got this kind of marks. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll I'll show you. Um, I did this last night uh, just to see how it works with uh, um, a postcard size. Because no matter how large he do, eventually we see only this uh, small, you know, on the book in the book or on the internet. Um, Maybe you have not have a giant TV, but that's the size of the painting. This painting are all, uh, and this is not very good. Uh, that, this is a relatively small, it's like a half meter, 19 and the 26. This one is, uh, yeah, this one is about uh, one meter, <coughs> 30, 38. This one is 38. This this page is uh, is uh, one of his last uh, paintings. I think in two thousand oh eight, after a trip in, in Guilin uh, in two thousand uh, in the Li River, Guilin uh, in two thousand oh six, and uh, that I think he was born in nineteen twenty. So he is uh, eighty. Three? Oh, no, no, 88. Right? So he got uh, um, the, the uh, uh, what was the R disease? Uh, us, so you forgot memory gradually. So he, he, he painted this from his memory, but uh, soon he would lose his memory and eventually uh, pass away in. 2013. This is Dementia or Alzheimer's, maybe. Yeah, yeah. As, uh, as, that's right. Alzheimer's. Yeah. The, the old uh, brand disease. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he also does uh, some something on glass and some uh, porcelain with this kind of uh, uh, calligraphy um, strokes. It's a stained glass. Okay. Um, what's the time? So I'm going to show you uh, maybe 15 minutes of a clip that uh, um, is probably one of the last uh, visit from the, the media because there's a uh, year, a cultural year between France and China. And they made this uh, um, series for that. Uh, it, it's hosted by um, a, a, a student of his 
in Hangzhou when he taught there in the mid 80s. Uh, now he, he was a professor, he became a professor in art history. <clears throat> and uh, he made this series called the Return to Paris. And uh, one of the old friend he visited was uh, uh, Zhao Wuji. Okay. I'm going to <coughs> translate uh, a little bit if I can. But I, I just want you to, uh, to know him, you know, through this uh, documentary. Let me go back to. Okay, let's just start from here. Can you mute yourself, the background noise? I want to mute everybody. <coughs> <It's me. coughs> I'm going to start. He's the most famous Chinese painter in the world. I met him in the 80s. He returned his uh, mother's school to teach for one month. I was a student in art history. I became an uh, interpreter of his wife, his French wife. When I uh, studied in France for 10 years, I met him several times. This picture is uh, my uh, Classmates met him in Paris then. This time, he gladly accepted my visit request. We went to, to his uh, residence. It looks very normal. He lives across the street in this uh, yard. This is the living room, and across the street is the studio. The fourth floor is his uh, uh, painting studio. Be careful, it's a slippery. He wears a gown like a doctor. That's his uh, working gown. This uh, living room. He, we discussed about uh, a modern art show in Paris from China. He said uh, there are two artists in Hangzhou. Why they didn't introduce them here? These are these are painted based on photographs. It's a it's a non painting painting. Doesn't have anything to do with uh, fine art. He talks to the cat in France because the cat only understands uh, French. He was uh, paint alone after a, a, a daily basis here. I start at 9.30 until 6.30 here, <laughs> including weekends. I never rest. Oh, you can't. Do you enjoy it? Or a duty to do? I, I like it, painting. If I don't paint, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to die. Every year I paint 15 pieces. I'm going to publish a book with all my paintings. Uh, it's about uh, 1,500 pieces. 
送给苏东坡，去他自己打个电话什么？哎，他说无忌啊，我要买你一张画。嗯。The French president president、uh, used to purchase a painting as a gift to Chinese premier. 照片那个照片，哎，哎，从他拍照，从那个拍照，从他照画一照出来拍照。He has good has good memory. He remember he went to uh the Hangzhou school art school in at uh, fourteen years old. His mother said, uh, uh, "You have no, uh, no good uh, fortune if you are artist." But his father said, uh, "Go do that." Uh, I don't want to hand my bank to to your hand. It will go bankrupt soon if I do that. So his uh, his father supported him. He accompanied uh, him to the Hangzhou school when he was fourteen. He, talk, he talked about the story with the Pantian Sou's landscape class. Uh, Pan's class is a required lesson, a required, required credit class. I must take, but I hate it. I don't like the four ones they teach. So I painted a rock uh, and then signed a rock by Wuji. And uh, the teacher was angry and uh, reported to, to the principal. The principal, uh, Lin Fengmian, and and uh, the dean, uh, Lin Wenzhen, they they are they didn't do anything. <laughs> so they are. He is very thankful to his uh, um, teachers there. He, his uh, dedicated painting to his uh, oil painter Wu Da Yu. He was also an educated, uh, returned uh, artist from France. This is the Dr. Dan. This is a Chinese style still life painting. He turned to abstract. He feels like uh, the uh, uh, the word of Taoist. The space, sense of space, is Chinese. Although the technique are Western, he was influenced by the uh, Chinese uh, artifacts, especially the bronze. Um, he's going to show the visitor his collection. These are all. Authentic. Where where you you get this? Here in France. They won't let it to go out out of China now. Uh, earlier than 18th century stuff. If I buy there, I'll get uh, caught. I really like the decoration patterns on this. I also like the porcelain, the cylinder, glaze color, beautiful. I I'm influenced by all this kind of uh, good stuff. I also like the ancient Chinese uh, painter, uh, Fan Kuan, the Northern Song. Monumental landscape, very huge landscape. I I hang it in my studio and uh, look at it every day. Now uh, he shows the uh, storage room with a Chinese brush painting. 
Yeah. Your painting yeah. looks uh, yeah. the same composition as your oil. Yeah, it's done by me, the same person. I I paint 200 pieces a year, a uh, Sumi painting. I only got uh, 15 good. Uh, the rest are all toned. I cannot paint them together. Uh, when I paint Sumi uh, or Chinese uh, ink painting, I don't paint oil. Uh, I spent two or three days on them. Um, they are very fast, so most of them are bad, though. I will tone them out and I'll tell them out. Here are some early sketches he did uh, in the late 40s. When I just arrived in Paris, I, I didn't study oil, I studied the sketch. I also studied uh, the language. It never been showed to the public. Yeah. I never showed them. We are so lucky today. Uh, we we I, I do have more motor motor. Uh, I think it's uh, read pain joy. They don't. They didn't believe I could paint nudes like this. Nobody should. I should nobody. It was discovered uh, uh, by my wife in the basement. More than one thousand sketches. I didn't dare to show them. Uh, okay, uh, the, this uh, documentary uh, featured another artist who uh, is a French artist, uh, an abstract artist. I think um, in the end of that, I'm, I'm going to skip, but he did talk about uh, who he think is the best uh, artist in France or something like that. And he, he, he ha had ha uh, high remarks on Zhao Wuji. It's Matisse. Uh, the Japanese, uh, the Chinese culture is magic. It's the greatest in the world. He very respect Zhao Qi. His opinion is eternal. Okay, I'm going to stop. Oh, I, I think maybe we should uh, listen to this, but it's an interesting remark on US art scene. Kennedy said uh, we should uh, cultivate uh, US art school with money. <laughs> The Americans want to lead the mainstream of the art in the world, just like they do in military, in war. 
Never. <laughs> okay. So any any uh, questions, comments? Who was the um, Frenchman talking? The the oh. other man at the end. Um, I don't know how to spell his name. Cut, uh, Cutling. I don't know how to spell it. It's okay. Chinese. Doesn't matter. Cutling. 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 I I tried to find the spelling. I couldn't. It it it's all in Chinese. Okay, but may, maybe he's famous. Uh, maybe Mary Dan could find find him. His name, Mary Dan. Do you know him? Cutling. Cutling or something like that. Henry? Yeah. Who who was the uh old Chinese uh landscape artist that he said he was influenced by the one the really large like uh oh Fan Quan, the the artist, the monumental art uh painter in yeah. northern Seoul. How, how do you spell that? F A N K U A N. I think in our lesson maybe third or four. It's a very early period. I love his work. Yeah, Fan Quan's uh uh Xi San the traveler, uh Travelers in the mountain, something like that. You know, the Northern Seoul monumental landscape that we talked about. If you go back to review the class. Oh, by the way, if you missed the early classes, you can find uh, um, all the information, the reference in the in the uh, online classroom. And I also, you know, kept a, co a public copy in the on YouTube. You can search for that. Uh, maybe just search my channel for Fan Quan. Dynasty. Yeah, I put the, his name on the chat. Fan Quan. Oh, okay, thank you for doing that. Um, okay, I'm going to see. I cannot see my okay, here we go. Uh, I tried to let me find an uh, interesting painting to to do. The French painter is Bernard Caithlin, C-A-T-H-E-L-I-N. Thank you, Barbara. Can you spell uh, in the chat room? So we have a record of that. Um, yeah, let, let's take a closer look of uh, his abstract uh, Sumi art. Um, brush painting techniques and uh, try to identify you know some uh, general um general how to say principles okay when you paint uh, abstract the rule is actually the same with uh, uh you know conventional landscape you just like a uh, first thing i noticed I would say is uh, uh, unfinished the look. So you don't want to complete, you know, to identify, to label it or to uh, identify it to, to, so that become abstract, right? So unfinished is, uh, uh, or untitled, you know, you might call it. So uh, let me see if there's any, okay, great for that. And, uh, uh, what other characteristic of abstract uh, uh, abstract landscape versus uh, realistic landscape? Because the Chinese uh, landscape painting is um, already very subjective, unlike the Western realistic tradition, 
uh, which is the oil, you know, the realistic oil painting, uh, classical oil painting, I'll say, is more objective. Um, but, uh, you know, Zhao kind of um, created this, uh, this kind of painting that depicts the invisible things like uh, we talk about air, wind, or rain, or you know, clouds, or something you know, more uh, dao, uh, qi, like in Chinese terms. So uh, it become okay. There's no horizon, right? But there's kind of gravity, so you can still tell which side. Sometimes I have difficulty to agree with him on, on orientation of the painting. Many, many oil painting actually. I think it's a vertical. I mean, landscape. It, it, he hang it vertically, uh, portrait way. So it's really depends on the you know the the way. I think probably he wants us to see it in a different angle. So this is the more realistic. Maybe we should start from here. Do you think? Do you think so? It's more understandable for common come on layman's mind. It's a same, you know, it just a, this is very uh, normal Chinese landscape. Probably he will get a pass in the Pantheon Show class with that, right? Yeah, he liked to paint rock. I, I, I think it as a positive um, information because when he talked about, you know, he, he drew a, a rock and signed the painting without trees. Yeah, that, that, that's what uh, he does. You know, there's no trees mostly in his later painting. So he likes uh, to paint uh, only rock. That's fine, completely fine, you know. So that's where we started uh, this series, right? When we uh, start, we, I, I said, if you can do a rock, you can do a mountain. So um, I'm going to use some fresh ink, fresh ink to I just add to my ink here. Okay, I I will wet. Uh, maybe half of it. So I, um, let me see. I think the dark comes uh, later, but usually it comes first. If so, how can we limit that to this little? Uh, well, we can use this, another, another brush for darks, but I think it, he does it in one, one, one brush. One brush, yeah. Um, this this size is a little different, so I'm going to maybe do it. To... Anyway, I'll, I'll just try. Okay, another thing I I would um, tell you early on, but later I'll, I'll show you more. That is the um, abstract painting actually has no limit, so you can crop it later to to define the limit somehow to, to make it uh, you know more presentable. But in the beginning, you should not limit it by the frame. You go beyond the frame and you can trim it later. So you don't want to stop at the frame, right? So he, especially his painting uh, is go beyond the, the border, definitely. Let me go both. So it's unsized? Uh, unsized the shun. Uh, this one was treated with a detergent. I, I love this uh, paper because he didn't uh, maybe treat it. But it got some wrinkles here. I also uh, would like to take advantage of that. But you can just use a regular uh, single shuan. So I got uh, plenty of water and I dilute a little bit of ink to get uh, light ink. <coughs> um, it don't, you don't have to blend it evenly. So uh, you can have a little bit dark, a few of a uh, spot. So I, I'll start maybe, you know, just like the dark is just that, that uh, little. So avoid the center, avoid the center. 
not not dead center. He, he, he did it probably in the center, but maybe on this side a little more. So I'm going to go this way. The gesture, painting. gesture is very important. Oh, you didn't see. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the, I missed the camera. So you, okay, I started from here and I, I jumped in the, to this side. I'm going to, to continue this direction. So I start from the dark, yeah. Uh, I would do this again. Like he said, you know, his success ratio is a uh, 200 um, with, uh, with uh, only 15, 15 good. So that's 7.5%. Uh, um, 7.5% is good. If, if you want to do this, you, you need to have a lot of paper, right? <laughs> Just the, uh, but uh, with with his uh, painting, we, we we tried we tried to not duplicate, try to to learn. It, it may help to um, increase that success ratio a little bit. It's so, hard uh, to say, you know, to see what is the success. How do you you know? Oh, like I said, um, all the principles you learn in, in um, figurative painting applies in, this one is figurative painting. I think it's, a, it's the same as a figurative painting, right? Every, everything, everything uh, you will judge a good painting in, in a normal, uh, it, you know, it's just like, a, um, <clears throat> You know, we have this kind of natural uh, landscape painting on the furniture decoration. We call the marble, marble stone. It it's really depends on um, how you frame it. You know, how you later. So, it, if you paint the the middle mountain right in the dead center, like he almost did that, but he he kind of managed to. And why that somehow? I think it's a. Uh, and this three peak are not the same, same uh, shape, same height. It has a. Uh, okay, it's easy to tell what's wrong. Maybe <laughs> if you show me your painting, I will tell you. How do you make a uh, judgment? It's the same principle. Same, same. Uh, there's no. Different set of uh, rules for abstract. This is not, uh, by the way, this is not completely abstract. It's figurative. Like uh, uh, this, like I said, he did this from the memory of Guilin. It has a title that says Guilin. Yeah, it's not numbered. I think it might be numbered, but it has a, a title also. Right. Let me show you the, the uh, entry on the bottom of that. Can you read that? No. Untitled. Okay. And, um, so I, I would I'll give like a several attempts to just to see which one is better. Maybe. Uh, maybe we can do a squarish one, more like a, this. Uh, Okay, I'm going to try one more time. Okay, another thing is, uh, you know, in his uh, own words, he, he liked the lightness of a uh, uh, brush on rice paper versus the hard, firm canvas. And uh, so he, he really don't, like a scrambling, scrambling uh, with uh, his uh, oil. When he paint oil, I see it, he use uh, scrambling a lot or, you know, rubbing. Um, maybe with, you know, sometimes he use a finger like a, a JW Turner also, right? Or, or, or rug, rug, something non-brush non to spread the, the oil paints. But on, on the uh, rice paper, it's so delicate. So you don't need to uh, use much force. The paper will 
well, the time also would do that for you, right? So if you if you just just go slow and enjoy. Just he 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 told his uh, uh, student uh, his painting process. Um, although he didn't show them, you know how to do the abstraction. It's like going on a date, so you cannot really control the result. You just respond. Respond, yeah. Okay. This is almost like the Japanese uh, master's Zen pen painting also, you know, the Seshu we learned, uh, just one stroke. You know. I see uh, he does really, uh, you know, here presented the depths of space you know, with uh, different tonalities. His mountains, like his early age, uh, he, early painting, he did um, this Oracle Wong script. So the mountain is almost like a triangle, just a triangle shape, triangle shape. He does a long triangle here. The, you know, he does probably just one minute or less, 40 seconds. By the way, um, I have a, a project recently. I spent a lot of time to, to uh, collaborate. Uh, at first, uh, we, uh, I, I tried to paint um, more, uh, accurately, figuratively, you know, a, a microscope view of a human an, uh, organ called uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, you know, the diabetes uh, uh, problem had the problem so uh, so solium, right? So I forgot the 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 the, the yi, Victoria. How do you say that? Uh, insulin. 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 Insulin, yeah, insulin. It's a like a little island, uh, islet, islet in the in the uh, insulin in the what is that uh, larger? Of, anyway, so that 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 image they gave me in the microscope view is an islet in the ocean. So I have to kind of make a, a painting, and they, why they explain that something with a uh, medicine company. Um, Documentary. So I, I did some research, uh, some studies. I can show you. Uh, I did numerous uh, tests. I then can show you this video. Uh, it might uh, um, show you why we do abstract because I only have in the end of uh, the the cut forty five seconds in the documentary to do the whole painting with islet in the ocean from uh, sky view, from a satellite view. So uh, let me show you what I got so far. And we haven't filmed yet, but uh, this is some, uh, this is the islet painting project. Okay, the practice. And I got approval actually yesterday. So I'm going to show you this. Or I'm going to probably to film based on this uh, mock. Uh, I'm going to show you this. Pits. Okay, hold on. Okay, can you see it? Um, the the yeah, I expanded to the client, so it probably is helpful. I just let it go.
I said, uh, 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 I'll do this eyelet in calligraphy with dry brush. <clears throat> so this will probably will take me, I, if I use a large brush, probably 10 seconds. If I use the same brush we did uh, today, Not the ocean. Watch this. This will be cut in the end of the. I mean, if uh, they have to edit it, something like. That. Yeah, it has some gradation, so that's nice. Okay. 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 So you can also do fire brushing. You can have some gradation into uh, the movement so that the uh, what we call it energy is the sea. But if I don't reload the brush, you can do this very fast. I can use a larger brush like this. So this one can be like this. Your voice is muffled. Oh, uh, don't worry about that. It's, uh, I explained to the client about uh, my techniques and uh, some options mm -hmm. there. So basically, yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't want to uh, really spend too much time, but I just want to, sh uh, to share with you this uh, texture is done with the milk or uh, the white ink, either way. It's a water resist and they, they like that. So uh, the wrinkles on on this painting is just skipping, you know, from the dry brush. Hey, I don't understand. Did you paint that before you began the washes? You painted the resist, the white ink resist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I prepared that painstakingly uh, before the painting. So it, it's okay. just, uh, yeah. I, I so draw this. They, the they give me a pattern. They send me the pattern with a microscope uh, photograph. I, I draw mm -hmm. this, the cells. I draw the cells as if they are water ripples, uh, uh, foam, for, for, firm, F O A M, forms. Foam. Forms, yeah. Forms if, if seen from the sky. The wave <laughs> forms from the sky. Looks like a sails. Uh, later, you know, when I finish, I will add some sails, you know, sail, uh, some, uh, I think there are some. Uh, yeah, some some we, we talked about some how to make some a lot you know some medical things, but it's not re relevant. I used also cream coat paper. They didn't like it. They like my hand drawn process. Although it will take a lot of time, they will pay for that, of course. If I do not use the, uh, you know, there are many options to draw this uh, forms uh, or cell walls, cell walls in in white. Yeah, so. Uh, I can use, uh, let me see, where's the, oh, Maybe you, you can you're, not seeing, you're, you're not seeing the, 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 the options. So uh, yeah, I, I used the various uh, techniques here. That's, that's just the one uh, option. And in, in the beginning, I draw this, uh, I, I, I kind of negative paint on the cells shape and I leave the white. That that's takes too long, way too long for the film to take. So I, I, I try to shortcut that. And uh, you know, if I don't do anything, it will be like this. It, it doesn't really, but they do like some uh, uh, particles in the, uh, uh, anyway. This is, this it's is just fantastic. the- 
Thank you. Uh, actually, I can show the painting itself, maybe not the process, but I can show you what the result if you want to see. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> okay, the, the, this, this was a uh, uh, realistic uh, uh, painting of uh, uh, the uh, microscope uh, picture. It's, it's uh, too real. They don't like it. So, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, this, is, uh, this is the wall, the cell, cell walls are painted with line. It doesn't uh, really look like that. There's some different perspective. Uh, some <laughs> interesting. They will they will make some uh, illustration like how you you make it work like uh, highways or something whatever. They, I don't really read the storyboard. I just do what they give me. Uh, this is the template I created, and then I I uh, based on the the scientific uh, photograph, and I I uh, I then use uh, uh, my uh, my. Uh, Light, light box, and I prepared, this paper is actually painted with that pattern, you know, you don't see it, it's an it's a, uh, invisible pattern. I, I painted it with the, this page under it, to, you know, put a light box behind, you'll see that. And I, I draw these lines with the milk or uh, white ink. On different paper. This is the mulberry. This is the uh, actually you can see a little bit hint if you could. Yeah, very hint. This is milk because milk has a little color, um, and the eyelet was omitted. So there's no pattern. When I paint, you will see that. And I also tried uh, to to paint the negative shape, the the inside of the cell. You know, to leave the this, the, uh, uh, the walls and painted. So as I just do a wash, it will become dark. Uh, there are many, 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 many different uh, techniques I explored to do this. And this is the, the crinkle to effect. I just dipped the, the I, I dipped the, uh, just like a tie dye, or, you know, I, I decided to do just like we did in class. I, I, I painted the ridge of the wrinkles to become this pattern. And then I, uh, <clears throat> I washed it, but you have to skip a lot of uh, uh, you have white space between the stroke, so you you give a feeling of calligraphy. Like this one was on the on that clip. That's the episode they picked. They liked it. This is the one the 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 result, you know the original painting that they uh, they liked. So. Uh, it's on, on unsized shrine with milk. The milk has little subtle uh, edge, which is uh, kind of softer, you know, you can see the, it's, it's very interesting. I think, uh, uh, you know, class Ping did uh, very good with the uh, milk that inspired me to, and besides milk is much cheaper than the white ink. Right? You can also use alum, by the way. This is a uh, white ink. Um, so you use milk to paint? You use brush? I draw, I draw this pattern. This, this is cell, this, okay. this is a uh, form, form, water form. Um, the large brush, the wash. Maybe yeah, the, this you can is, try with a bubble. Yeah, this this little dots also I did with uh, uh, white ink. I still have you some. Said you said could, you could use almond milk as well. Oh, I don't know. I think it, I think it must have some oil in it. Uh, Ping, you oh, used the uh, I used the for for uh, home 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 milk. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> you can use milk or cream, cream. as well. Yeah. yeah. Cream would be good. Cream is more oily, yeah. Uh, this is on size, the paper. Actually, I did those patterns, but it didn't really show. It's very subtle. 
so I have to skip them because they they like the the Scarlet with the, this kind of uh, um, little um, texture. So <laughs> I probably have to size the middle part of the unsized paper or something later <laughs> to get the both word, you know. <clears throat> And Victoria is going to write the titles for the for the video. So um, you know the use the the marriage of science and uh, abstract painting. Thank you for showing us that. Thank you. Um. Okay. To to save some time, I, I can I, I also show you uh, this, and I may I may do a demo of this. This this painting is uh, I did last night as preparation for this class. Um, I painted based on his uh, oil painting, so I just used the composition and the, the value, you know, the dark and maybe I I reverse the value. This could be light as I use dark, but uh, depends on how you know you read it. Um, so. This this is pretty nice. I think it's uh, pretty figurative. You know, I see a, a kind of reflection pond, uh, mountain, the sky. You know, it's very clear to me. It's a dream landscape. He probably paints his mind landscape, or, or there's no specific face. But this one uh, is a vertical, vertical composition. Uh, but if you look at uh, Horizontally, it looks like less, more like landscape. But this is abstract. And that's that's how uh, it was printed in the book. In that book, you know, I just did the many painting like this in, in the book, and uh, this one also looked like a landscape. So I just picked something interesting and then do that. Oh, this one is a, uh, a dancer. <clears throat> I did a card. I can show you later how to make cards. Um, and uh, this is one of the study, uh, the dancer. I, I was playing this song called the Com uh, Harmonian uh, between man and the heaven. It's a, um, a shaman dancing music in, in like 2000 year, I mean, uh, 5,000 year ago, maybe, uh, Gu Qing. Uh, they, <laughs> uh, maybe we can paint something with uh, Victoria playing that song with a drum and a Gucci. How's that? Victoria, maybe, yeah, you, you, you feel that. And uh, I, I already uh, did a watercolor with that. I mean, the original watercolor was uh, given to my Gucci teacher. She loves it. And I'm going to do more maybe. So, uh, okay, speaking of uh, composition, this was a partial. A uh, copy of uh, his uh, uh, oil, um, but I I realized that uh, the composition has a problem. Like uh, the space, the, the white space here is too evenly di divided. There's too much here. If I lower this mountain and have this um, whatever you you call it, clouds or, or river broader, it will it will be much better in composition. You agree? So. Success or not success is really the same as you judge a figurative uh, painting. Uh, this is this is a my own creation. I was uh, okay. We we have a rainstorm and our fence is falling. Uh, actually, we have to fix it <laughs> after the class. Uh, so I had this diagonal. And I have really a picture falling with a flower under it, and a bamboo, um, bamboo, um, also in the painting. So it's just the expression of my my feeling of a rainstorm we had yesterday. And this is a painting based on his oil. You probably can find uh, the relevant uh, reference in the book. Like basically a copy of uh, his uh, oil painting this way. So you, if you if you read it uh, upside down, you can tell because that's the peak 
um, it's like a mountain, and it, I, I interpret it as a, a, a landscape. I, I, I think it doesn't make it um, much interest if you finish it like the, too much, too, to finish it too much. If I, if I leave it to like unfinished, it was better before I add those dry stroke. It's you know more ambiguous. I think uh, it would be more abstract. So I'm finished, and uh, yeah, this one uh, I started to, with the light and added this two figure two and become uh, this is the same Guilin, you know, the the one I uh, I did earlier. Uh, this one may be a good way to show you how to deal with this kind of uh, uh, wasted painting or abandoned painting. So uh, what I do, if uh, you know, you will end up a, a pile of this after the, uh, this uh, class, maybe. What I do is I I I have this uh, uh, blank card. It's a seven by four, right? Seven by four. This card, I, I use it as a um, guide, maybe just a roughly. So you can you can cut it. You can use a cutter. I, I use a uh, old fashioned. I have an old fashioned uh, um, photo, photo cutter. They don't sell this anymore. They use glide blade these days, but I like this so I can see it. Uh, this is very small. So I, I cut those uh, little trade cards, you know, the ACEOs with this, with this. Let me just cut roughly first. Then we'll, I'll show you how I do it. So that, like I like this corner or somewhere I want. Uh, I know that this, the measurement is a seven to seven by ten, right? So we can cut seven here, just randomly cut like that. Then. Um, Oh, this is not enough. I, I, I made it wrong. Something wrong. Hmm. Anyway, maybe I can just frame it with a mat. Uh, or I can just do the half page about that. You know, you, you can do that, right? Just uh, let me do another one. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you can. You can use another. Let's see. Let me make sure it's. But I'm not sure this part is, is what I like. I will piece. Oh, you, we can use any piece that we don't want from this pile. Not try it. I just did this. Okay, you got the idea, right? Um, just uh, select the portion portion you like, and then uh, uh, you can you can um, put it on the card with silicone paper like this. It would be. Well, let's just do it. You never know. It's it, it, when you cut it, it looks very different. This, this side still works, I think. So 10, 10 is the width. Seven. Uh, yeah, this is the height. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's say on 
on the paper I, I have three prepared one with a silicon paper so I, I have the silicon paper mounted on the card and then I release I release the backing the release paper from, come from the silicon so it's like a laminated on the so I I put this on. You can use any card uh, paper. It's a seven by 10. I also tried the backing paper we sell. Oh, you can use a, you know, like a Bristol paper, some, some uh, drawing paper could also work. Okay, then I just iron it and put this on. This is back on. This is release paper as a um, protecting sheets, and I iron it on. It's a set on cotton. I think. Let's see. Let's see. Doesn't matter. Just uh, some heat. Wall. Oh yeah. Wall. Wall bit higher. Yes. Wall. Okay, I can even do this before it gets dry. So that's what I did the, the before sleep last night. Uh, I did this while it's still wet, this greening painting that uh, I, I demoed. So this, oops, just uh, set that. Okay, now you, you have a abstract card. You can fold it. Because ab abstract uh, painting looks good, uh, just like tie dye. Uh, you can use a uh, Christmas color if you like. <laughs> so they don't. Um, it, that's why it look like you know the uh, Zhao Wuqi's uh, panel paintings, right? So you, you can fold it, no problem. Abstract painting can be can be folded. If you have a, a nice design right in the middle. Then it would be a problem. So, uh, but uh, this is just a decoration, and then you can. It's it's good for for um, for men. <laughs> it's a, I saw some somebody sell on on Etsy saying uh, you know abstraction Java key style for men. Unfolded. I have a title for you. Oh, unfolded. It looks like creation. Creation. Yeah, it, you know. Do you see life? Life is just beginning. Uh -huh. you, you can still, uh, which side is uh, up? You know, maybe this side. I, I, I see the, this is better or this better. I can do. I like it that way. That way, this way? Okay. No, so, the other way. The other way. This is, yeah, I saw this is the land. That's the uh, sky or whatever. Um, okay, yeah, this is probably the way I painted so that you can probably still feel the, I'm not sure really. Yeah, I think so. This is a more uh, grounded, right? Okay, so Barbara, I'm gonna send this card to you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I interrupt you. Oh, I'm going to send this card to you. You will get this in the mail. Okay, I will. I will uh, write uh, your your. The greetings later, but this is a um, this is one card, and uh, I can maybe uh, explore some more if you want to have more um, exercise. You can use uh, um, you can cut your paper into this uh, size seven by ten now, and then we will do some small ones together using small brush. Okay. Seven by ten, so you don't have to uh, 
crop it from larger piece. But um, my, my idea is that um, since you're going to use a lot of paper practice and uh, abstraction just to, to uh, don't, don't uh, tell them, then don't use uh, you know, as a blotting paper only. But you can, you, uh, if you get my, my idea, my business idea is this, if you um, get one piece out of that large sheet and you can sell it or give it as a friend, you know, as a gift to a friend, it works that, 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 you know, that sheet don't. So I always, I have a pile of this kind of uh, cut pieces that has, you know, uh, it's waiting for me to uh, title it or maybe touch up a little bit later. So I, if you um, had my SEO cards, they are all from this kind of uh, little pieces from larger painting. So uh, in Chinese, I said, uh, uh, you draw little painting from a larger painting and small painting into mini painting. Okay, understand? You're getting, so you start with large. If it doesn't work, cut it into smaller piece. If still not work, cut it into mini cards. ACEO cards, business size card. You can, you know, like this painting, you can, if you don't like it, you can, you can cut it into um, two and a half by three. That's business uh, or ACEO card. So you can, you can make uh, plenty of them, right? Okay. Let's do some pure abstraction. Do we, okay, I, we still have some time. Do some cards seriously. Okay. I like some. Uh, okay, this is a plant, but it's vertical. Not good for the card. We we can use some ideas uh, here. Maybe um, I think he had uh, some more orchids kind of. Uh, uh, if you if you take a look of this photo, actually it has the um, the quote I tried to get. It it described his feeling of on rice paper with the brush, uh, very gentle, very light, very soft, with a firm and this hard surface of a canvas. But he cannot do both on the same day. You have to. Uh, he has to manage time. Okay, look at uh, his uh, painting size. And the, the way he hold the brush, see the difference? He hold it like a oil brush, right? Pushing, pushing to, to make it split. And hold it near the end of it. That's uh, his uh, scale of painting, I see. Whole sheets of paper. So, so he do the uh, on the rice paper or watercolor paper probably. Uh, he does one color, maybe cool color side, and then we warm maybe. Yeah, that's watercolor blocks. And this is when it's probably for the opera house. <clears throat> Several large sheets uh, together. Okay. Um, he, he does something like tree and clouds here, right? So uh, let's try this one, okay? Uh, right this way. Uh, I, I just do it on the corner. Can you see it? Can you see it here? My piece is- Yes, we can see it. Okay, yeah, you can see the original. And let me move it to, to the uh, right, to the left. Oops. Uh, I'm doing this. Here, okay. You can see my brush here. I, I'm using a, a any brush. It could be. It should be soft brush. I think this is a mixture, but it's okay. I'm going to do the uh, trunk. So this trunk goes. And look at the middle lines. I I have to consider both sides. So there's something on the on the back and something in the front. So this is a piece of rock, of course. And then goes uh, up and there's a little tree. And so there, it could be a tree, it could be something else, but different uh, um, 
angle and different lengths and different distance between them. That's all it has to do with the con uh, concrete uh, painting as well, you know. And then you have a gap. You definitely need a gap between them to then you do the, the other group. It has a gap there, you know, just uh, pointing to the sky as we talked about uh, trees generally pointing to the sky, but you, it's uh, uh, against the gravity. So the gravity pulls it down. And uh, so you push the brush to get that kind of uh, struggle and uh, tendency. Okay, and then then the split the brush. It's almost the, like a football shoe uh, style, right? Football shoe style and landscape. And you kind of gesture, create some some dance, some some uh, just add a little water to do the the factories a little bit, but it should be dry. So you can use a paper towel to dry the brush a bit to get some dryness. But I try to do it in a sequence. It doesn't, you don't have to use the interference of a paper towels. So everything's uh, in one load. And you try to depict the chi, the wind. The tree has to do with the direction of the wind. And maybe tornado, which is not uh, it's very quiet. It's, could be gentle breeze or more energy resist like a dramatic clouds here and the diagonal skyline already the the, the ground is uh, or the hill is uh, um, like here Let's see a triangle behind that defines a little bit the land and then Sky. It's something, a lot of space <clears throat> between, and uh, just wash my brush, clean brush with water. Just you know, soften the edge of some, some. Uh, so this cloud is like behind the tree. Some other files. Maybe overdoing it, but uh, it's the only water, <laughs> not much in my brush. So I'm gonna, I'm not going to wash the sky. What not wash the sky? Just leave it to blank. That's it. Probably. Just combine this corner. Okay, then. So my brush is clean. I, I never washed the brush, I should just paint it on the paper. <clears throat> now I'm ready to, to uh, mount it into a card. And if you give a title to it, uh, I don't know the title, it's this all untitled. Uh, you'll get this uh, in the mail if you like. If you order something, you know, <laughs> from, from Brooklyn Arts before holidays, which can still mail you. I, I give you a um, discount. We didn't have promotion this season because we're too busy. But you can get use the code uh, YouTuber, YouTuber, to get the uh, ten percent off if you order that. And uh, I I give you a card. Uh, as a gift from uh, if you use that code, okay. That's, so you get a you get a free card. You get ten percent off if you using the uh, before the holidays, and maybe before the new year. Uh, extend it a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna just iron this before it dries. Iron it. Okay, it's you can see the steam. So that's the advantage of dry mountain. There's no time, uh, like overnight, no waiting time. So I always, I can, uh, if I do a workshop, you can get the painting home and frame it at the night.
I drive the painting and then doing the mounting at the same time. It has some tan because the paper I bought was a tan. You have to, you don't have to buy colored cards. But it's kind of nice to have this uh, antique. And you can show the texture of the, the rice paper better actually this way. Anybody? This, uh, um, I know Barbara is very, very good at uh, title, but uh, um, anybody else can, can give a title to this, to claim that? With... Anyway, I'm going to maybe call it a gentle breeze or something. Or Dance the... in the wind. Dance in the wind or eastern wind. <laughs> Dance in the eastern wind. It's going this way, right? <laughs> Thank you, Ping. You got it? Just have fun. <laughs> Dance in the eastern wind, okay? Yeah. Usually, uh, yeah, you, you can sign with a little maybe initial or something uh, on the corner because he, he didn't use Chinese calligraphy uh, to, to uh, destroy the, the uh, feel of uh, abstract painting. Um, but you can use it just a, a small chop like a, as a signature also. I'll do that later. So let's continue. The, let me just fold it to show you how it looks like a, as a card. Let me show a bit of picture. So this is the, the finished uh, look. Uh, there are another technique I want to show you is that, uh, uh, you know, when I was in France um, in the, I think it's four years ago, in, during Christmas, I did a Chris, Christmas card for everybody. And then we were uh, running out of time. I, I think we have like 20 some people, nearly 30 maybe. So I did two cards at the same time, like this. And you, you don't have to, um, do it exactly the same. You can, you know, shift it because it's abstract. Uh, you can shift a little bit. You can do more, more like this uh, to start with, and then you you finish. Maybe um, so let's just play some serious. I I see in his uh, painting picture somewhere that he, he has a, a stack of uh, uh, shrine paper, painted the paper together. Um, yeah, I think you can, you can use the smear effect, uh, okay. something like, uh, like that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's do something uh, like this, you know, with the uh, leaves or, I was thinking about orchids, kind of, yeah, that kind of uh, plants or, yeah, just the dashes. This is the earlier work, but uh, it's, it, it's good to part, it's good to practice. So this, this horizontal dashes or, or uh, strokes, what I'm going to do. So you don't want to put the stroke right in the middle, right? Um, let me just do one on top. And then we'll see what to come up. So I just avoid the center, maybe, you know, I just put a few pieces behind it just to let it happen. 
and I'll use the large brush. Oh, not this. This one is this wrist brush. Okay. Oh, I should not wet the whole thing. I forgot. Just uh, let it split in the end. Okay. So you you draw the um, something on top. I think he he does it really slow. And uh, so that's very conscious, you know, so somehow. But he has the movement of the elbow, he's, he mentioned in the quote uh, in, in that photograph. Uh, that. So some lost and font gives a rhythm. Dry and wet, <clears throat> and uh, some dots, some uh, split brush. To make it split, you just go bang, and then just have that sumi sound dance. Some some uh, some splatter maybe, some drip dripping, some little bit. I think it's pretty dry, but uh, I want to give a little softness there. So this kind of uh, small texture is uh, the focal area. I, I don't see a focal point, focal area that you want to, uh, to have, maybe. I don't want to repeat, that's the principle of this. Okay, then we have some stand paper which give you inspiration. So people is always um, worried, you know, I mean, knowing nothing to do are kind of a, a scared feel. To overcome the feel you, is to have some stand like this. And then you will, you just go with uh, uh, your solution to fix it. You know, you, you can, you can, uh, if you don't know, just make more stains until you, you see it, you see it. This is more like the Yuan Dynasty, Huang Gongwang painting, you know, the, the landscape, the Yuan Dynasty landscape. Obviously he's not copied the classic, but the composition is very interesting. Right. This, okay, we can just do this one, right? Is that, that so. Side stroke, plowing, skipping down. Uh, he he used just dark ink, yeah, to begin with, and something like a X cut stroke, and then some you know like a shulu stroke, and also angular kind of angular stroke, right? And this like cracks. He does a lot of cracks. On the on the uh, maybe inspired on the crack uh, ice crack uh, porcelain glaze that kind of thing. It's uh, he 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 had this kind of antique. I I'm I'm sure at home <laughs> to to get this right. I you know see I got the spot on the uh, on the corner the stand that just matches the, this design and. I try not to define everything. And uh, try, I think the, the angle should, should not be parallel. So this one should go a little bit up. Just go up. Let's try to make uh, uh, the, the elevation, right? The, the heights of these peaks or whatever uh, different. Uh, you see, I, I tend always to, to make the make them even, so that's a natural tendency of uh, uh, we all try we all make. So we try avoid those uh, common um, 
tendencies to put things in the middle or to even to if you know the distances to equal something like that. You can then use a uh, light ink. Let me just use a different brush or just the water to kind of uh, spatter a little bit. It's like a snow, snow, uh, snowy, like Liu Guosong. It's more like Liu Guosong's painting, this one. That's the difference. Here's a more defined. Uh, um yeah this one just a pattern of uh, various ink okay i just use uh, the arch one and it's just like a tripping tripper <laughs> To, for me to 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 uh to use as a tripper, they just let the color barely touch the paper and drip some dark dots. And you hold the brush loosely at uh, at the end like this, you know. So this brush is uh, made of a wheeled shape like this horn. I can really <laughs> control it like a regular brush, I hold it to, I just hold the string about that, just let it swing on the paper and I just lead it with the string. And just touch a little bit. Oh, it goes, it dance like that. Oh, look like. Look like it goes on to the other paper, <laughs> never in paper. That's okay. See that? I got the stain on the on the other card. Let's show you. That adds a touch there. So he he had this kind of table with uh, all a pile of uh, works he's working on. But um, one thing I I I try to uh, avoid is to, you know, when you use large brush, don't have the water blur too much so you will lose all the hard edge or shape. Uh, it becomes too smart, smooshy. So you, you, the rice paper is the best with a dry brush. Uh, even you know when you do wet, you should keep it thirsty. It just go slow when you want to wet, okay? And stuff, if you see anything good, uh, there's no way to copy the message, just to get inspired and then uh, to see. I need a little bit texture just to use partial split hair brush. You can draw the very detailed. See, this big brush can do very small texture there. This, te this brush is available on our website. Still, uh, we, ha we have a few left. <laughs> this natural home shape is it's good to, to have to do Jawu key style landscape with. Okay. Too much additions, maybe. And uh, let me just apply uh, it yeah, with uh, iron and silicone paper. Oh, the time is up. So uh, I'll give the time to uh, Yong Le now uh, to make an announcement. Yong Le, are you ready? Yes, hi. Uh, I have already copied the registration link in the chat. Okay. Um, so anyone who is interested uh, is welcome to, to register. Yeah, you can uh, maybe describe the 
class a little bit more? Oh, okay. The class will be meeting to, um, for 15 Tuesdays, uh, starting Tuesday, January 18th, ending to May 3rd. We are skipping February 1st. That's the Lunar New Year Day. And uh, the theme is all about tiger. Um, we will be doing the Siberian tigers in snowy forest, uh, plum blossom with tiger, South Asian tiger in tropical jungle with orchids, uh, yellow hills with tiger color butterflies. So everything related to the tiger, it could be the flowers, lotus flowers, sunflowers, uh, bamboos and the, all the environments where the tiger room all over the world. So it's a, it's a creative class combining the skill of Asian brush painting with watercolor painting. And the class material supplies um, will include watercolor paper as well as uh, thin paper and thin mulberry paper. Mm -hmm. But the brushes we will be using will be Chinese brush. The colors we'll be using will be traditional um, Western oh, color. color. Mm -hmm. And so you will have a minimum of seven. And if you have a minimum of seven uh, colors, uh, three, three pairs of the cool and warm colors, so you will be good. Mm -hmm. um, the details will be, um, it's already on. Uh, the website in through the registration link. Um, registration uh, is ready and you're all welcome and uh, spread the world, the word uh, to your friends and family. Thank you very much, Henry. We'll continue to work with the library and thank you very much everyone for your support to make this happen. Thank you uh, for continued support. And uh, this class is free for the public. And uh, thanks for the donors of the library. Um, and also thank everybody in this class to, uh, for your support of my uh, landscape series. This will be the, the last uh, class. And uh, this is the last class. So it's time to say goodbye for this year. And uh, see you next year in Yunus uh, library class. At least uh, I also, um, after you know taking a, a break, uh, if I have more energy and uh, if the the pandemic is still you know uh, prohibit us from doing other things, uh, actually actually we were invited to go to a shopping mall to do the Hui Chun you know calligraphy and the painting. We were very hesitant to, and we kind of reluctant to go uh, in the February. So we don't know what going what's going to happen if we are not. Uh, Busy with other things, we I still um, keep the mind open to to other a parallel class, maybe a flower and birds class. Uh, in addition to the fusion landscape class we just announced, so keep in touch with me. I will let you know. Thank you very much for. Thank your you, Henry. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Have a good Thank you, Henry. Happy, Henry. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy, Christmas, Christmas. Happy yeah. Christmas. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy oh, New Henry, Year. Henry, yeah. show the front of that book again so I can take a picture of it. And where can you buy it? Uh, it's a very expensive uh, book on Amazon. I think I got a used book. It's pretty good condition. You can see uh, the new one is uh, 105 or something like that. It's, oh. I bought probably at 70 or 80. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very expensive. Yes. Yeah, but it's a uh, four hundred page, maybe something. Yeah, four hundred mm -hmm. page. Uh, so the title, title is just Zhao Wu Qi. Uh, yeah. This Chinese character is uh, life. Uh, oh, okay. Let me see. What's the Zhao Wuqi? Oh, uh, 1935 to 2010. That's the span of his uh, art career. He was actually born in 1920 and to 19, uh, 
19, I mean, 2013. So, but this book uh, is uh, Chao Chao Wuki from 1935 to 2010. That's probably uh, the last uh, painting he, he, he did or uh, public, you know, in, uh, seen in public life. Maybe. I think, uh, let me see if there's a, yeah. It says there is a chronicle account with all the pictures, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, he has a great uh, social cycle, like uh, with a lot of famous poets, president, uh, cultural figures and uh, actors, all, all that. Beautiful book, beautiful book, yeah. He's so so happy person. And uh, yeah, I, I really admire him. This book is uh, so far the, the best in the market, I think. So you don't have to buy any other book. There are many, many books, by the way, uh, categories, uh, catalogs of uh, exhibition like this. Uh, don't buy this. Yeah, it's not comprehensive. So this one, you will find everything. Especially it has more ink painting in this one, which is not uh, found in any other place. You know, the Guilin's uh, last painting that we did, uh, that's uh, only found in this book. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for the. Yeah, he is my favorite. Oh, yeah. uh, Ping, actually, I saw the article you passed me many months ago, ask, suggesting me to do him, right? The, I, don't um, I, I don't remember, but he is. Like, I think I, when I search my friend's circle for Zhao Wuji, I found the reference you sent me only. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. a good article. Mm -hmm. It talks about uh, his life. His, um, I'll, I'll forward you back. You give me that link. I, now I'll forward you back. It's in Chinese. Yeah. So thank you, um, thank you for, for your information, actually, for the information you sent me. I, I, I read that article only when I prepared my class for the first time. But, um, I learned a lot from teaching. So uh, as Confucius said, you, you, you teach, uh, teach, you know, a student and teacher helps uh, grow each other together. So really appreciate your participations again. Um, let me see if any other comments and questions before we close. No, okay, I'm gonna stop recording. Thank you everybody on YouTube for following me. And uh, if you like to join our class, uh, go to the uh, online uh, year-round class at uh, ChineseBrushPainting.ning.com. I'll post to the link in the video description. Thanks and have a good uh, uh, holiday season and a happy new year. Oops. You too, Henry. Have a 